Welcome back to Rotten Reels Reviews, audio review number 40. Still no superhero suggestions, so I have no choice but to, I don't know, explore no horror exploitation films this time around. Instead, I'm just going to cover one of New Line Cinema's own franchise. New Line Cinema attempting to branch out from Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the Ator films with Miles O'Keefe and Sonny Chiba's Fighter series, Wes Craven's pet project, A New Nightmare, truly breathed life into the company, allowing a series of creature features to be born. This is Critters. Space. The deepest of blue screen, black sheets, and Christmas lights with a giant camera turd? Of these modern-day monster films, the Critter franchise was born. In 1986, Critters was released the success of the rate of Joe Dante's Gremlins, and has long since been a standing of dispute on whether or not they were cashing in on its popularity. But this reviewer says nay-nay. Directed by Stephen Herrick, uh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, The Gifted Ones, Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead, Three Musketeers, Mr. Holland's Opus, and 101 Dalmatians, the focus is really around the creatures themselves, the krites, or critters, if you will. Inform the troops, Lord Vader has arrived. Yeah, love child of Bib Fortuna and Baron Harkin. I'm going to need at least three buckets for that level of puke. Ah, all prison security systems are ran by Amiga. Yeah, that should help. A notorious hungry species has been rounded up from the multiple planet murders they have committed. It. They're in the big house, baby, the Hooskow, the Iron Bar Hotel. When they make a prison break, swipe a ship and hightail it out of there. No sooner do the Krites bounce, the warden contracts two, body, uh, two bounty hunters to give us a sweet weapons and gear montage as they head out to chase down the Krites. I guess they're the people of the everlasting gobstoppers. They get their orders and head to their ship and off they go. No disintegrations. And we have title card. You know, for a minute it was looking like Breaking 3 Disco Space Opera. The standard storyline is aliens land on Earth to hide out from the heat, or a new planet to conquer, or maybe plunder gold, whatever. Stuck in the Midwest, poor bastards, they proceed to attack a small town in Grover's Bend, Kansas, terrifying the locals, thrashing the farms, and tormenting the Brown family. Let's meet our lucky contestants, huge-hearted Mother Helen. D. Wallace of E.T., the extraterrestrial, the howling Cujo, free-spirited, easy-going April, Nadine Van Devel of private school, Days of Our Lives and Silver Spoons, smart-ass yet brilliant Brad, Scott Grimes of Who's the Boss, Critters, Critters 2, and American Dad, and last but certainly not least, hard-working farmer Father Jay. Billy Greenbush of Five Easy Pieces, The Hitchers, and Jason Goes to Hell. Now I'm sure I could come up with a dozen of farming jokes and make lewd and incestuous comments about their family tree, but that's just too easy, and I'm bored easily. Oh, look at this! We even have a bumbling Sheriff Harve! Hey, em Emmett Walsh? Of the jerk, Blade Runner, and albino alligator? Oh, thank God, Anna Town Rummy Charlie. Don Keith Oper of Android City Limits Critters, Critters 2, Critters 3, Critters 4, and Infection. A minor leagues pitcher that does odd jobs for Jay. Guess comic relief, perhaps? Or to mine folks that the Midwest looks like them to them, their shit at folk. The duo of these faceless bounty hunters, Ugg and Lee, and yes, I didn't make those names up, have chameleonic heads allowing them to blend in whatever society they're hunting in. Not to mention enough firepower to take out the Bolivian army. Their job is to smite the Krites, no exceptions. Also, no first contact protocols for dealing with less advanced civilization. That, that's good. With the limited history, culture, music, and arts data the hunters have, Ugg takes the form of rock and roll sensation Johnny Steele. 
Terrence Mann of All My Children, Spook, A Chorus Line, Critters, Ginhar, Critters 2, Bump in the Night, The Dresden Files, Red Hook, and 30 Rock. While Lee can't make up his mind. I guess I better help out my younger viewers. See, kids, in olden times, things like MTV actually showed this concept called music videos. It was deemed a direct marketing of the band, their music, and highlight to their fans. Long, long ago, before the reality TV shows jammed the fucking airwaves. Brad gets a lecture on safety and dangers of fireworks, and suddenly I feel like I've warped into a PSA about blasting caps. Don't touch! And drunk Charlie looks doofy as before. April shows up with the Phantom. Her dad's checking out his ride like he ain't never seen no fangled ride like this before. Where's the corn go? April's boyfriend Steve, Billy Zane, Back to the Future 1, 2, and 3, Demon Eye, Titanic, is trying his level best to be respectful in spite of his girlfriend doing everything but taking his wang out during the dinner table to jerk him off. Hey, look, I'm all in favor of aggressive women, but damn, girl, you gotta hit the brakes. You'll get dessert. Not sure why April wants to screw in the haywalk. Maybe she likes it when the wa when the rats watch her. I don't know. Cue the porno music. With the house getting buzzed by the anti-grav of the Christ ship, the grounds are rocking. Oh no, sweetie, the earth didn't move for me. You just get off very, very easily. Jay and son Brad go to check it out, and they find livestock's been hollowed out like canoes. It's just, seriously, they are literally minutes behind from this landing. These little carnivorous mother humpers just went right through them. Lone Deputy Jeff, Ethan Phillips of The Shadow, First Contact, and Voyager, gets a crate visit. He hops out to investigate, and, well, so long, Neelix. Helen, clearly needing dinner cleanup, and goes a little bit longer to need a freakout and a jump scare. It's the duo package. Mounting cliches start hitting up when the phone lines go dead, followed by the lights. Well, time to hit in the fruit cellar. Brad, you clock Henrietta if she gives you any back sass. Thank you, Evil Dead fans that got that joke. Jay gets to the drop on him as the crates attack. <laughs> I'm betching the HMO is not covering that. Eesh. The family of four fend off the crates with fire axes, ball bats, and of course, old school double barrel boomstick. With 80's mom on the scene, you folks are fine. Dee Wallace has had to deal with rabid St. Bernard's, werewolves, and penis-shaped aliens before she can dish it out. The sheriff, armed with a thirty-eight long barrel, hears a thing's going on in the town. The local church getting plowed by Deputy Jeff's uh, patrol car, for example, and then a bar getting bashed up. Ugh, Johnny and Lee start tracing where the crites have gone down with a level of subtlety that can only be described as mm, worthy of a Trump speech about pussy and or loathing Jews. I can't recall if I actually loathe Jews. Oh, well, not really my concern. The Brown family is definitely faring better than the Kreitz as the night progresses. The cavalry arrives in the form of the bounty hunters who blast everything in sight. Seriously, this house is thoroughly trashed. But don't worry, State Farm will be all over it. Charlie takes off with the two hunters, and you can see how a booze hound former minor league pitcher would really come in handy. But when all said and done at the end of the game, you know, we realize that space mammals lay eggs. Hey, Darwin, suck it. So, what do we take away from this movie? Well, this sci-fi slash horror slash thriller was actually surprisingly enjoyable. Plenty of action, decent story, and character development, good enough for executive producer and CEO of New Line Cinema in the day, Rob Shea, uh, Robert Shea, to actually put his stamp of approval on it. With a budget estimate of $2 million, this little flick managed to pull down a modest $13 million gross, and that's not even including the VHS rentals in the day.
It's silly. Some of the lines are dated for today's generation. But again, I would recommend this for all age groups. With a rating of PG-13 follows more creature deaths, and even though human and cattle are being treated about the same, it's still not that gory, so you don't have to worry about keeping the kids away. Well, that's about all I got, folks. And remember, if you got any questions, any comments, yeah, if you need to get a hold of me, where to mail wacky movies you feel I need to review, hit me up at Facebook at RottenReels.com. So you can catch me on Twitter, Rotten Reels Reviews. You know, it's not difficult. And uh, have a good one. I'm out of here.